Greetings, everyone. This is episode two of the See Through Podcast, a podcast that creates transparency on disabilities and the champions with them. The guest on the show today is filmmaker Alex Blaschek. Alex's disability could be described as high level quadriplegia caused by a spinal cord injury. Before diving into our conversation, I wanted to play an audio clip from the trailer of her film. Here it is. A small community, if it's good at what it does, if the whole community is behind it, can actually become incredibly successful. I would say anywhere because I don't look nor sound like a Scottish person, period. I think we went to the Shetland Islands because it was important to go to a place very different from places we call home. And by talking to Shetlanders, we would end up broadening our ideas of what it means to take care of each other. What's up, Alex? Hi, Lamb. How's it going? Going great. Happy to chat with you today. Yeah. Where are you at right now? You're in Manhattan, right? Yeah, I'm in Manhattan. I'm in the East Village in my apartment where I've been for the last two months. Quarantine. Yeah, I'm in uh, Bushwick. Brooklyn, been stuck here for, I forget how long now. <laughs> That's right. It's funny because it's like we're not that far away, but it might as well be across the country, you know? I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've, I've thought about um, venturing into the city and just on a long walk, but mm-hmm. I always back down and don't do it. But anyways, yeah, thanks for uh, talking with me today. You're the My first pleasure. guest. so. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo, what, a, woo-hoo. what a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give some context to the listeners. You just made a film, a documentary. Um, can you kind of give them like a short summary of what you what you made? Sure. The short film's called Speaking Nearby, Conversations in Shetland. Um, we it's two years in the in the making. Um, it's a documentary about a trip that I took with um, all of my closest people to uh, the Shetland Islands, which are this remote group of islands north of Scotland. And it's a documentary kind of about the people we met there and um, how they talk about making their community in a really weird spot because it's really far away. It's really hard to get to. It takes a 15 hour ferry ride to get to there. So um yeah but people make their home there and they're really awesome so we wanted to document that yeah yeah it definitely seemed like the location um was kind of a a character in the documentary but uh yeah Yeah, it definitely provided for some uh visually pleasing images yeah it's like all all like beautiful uh stormy seas and um foreboding cliffs and everything yeah I mean, it was yeah. cool because our, our, when we went we um we traveled you know i'm i'm a wheelchair user and we also traveled with a one-year-old baby and there was 11 of us so we like were pretty uh adventurous we felt like with our um with our travel because uh um you know not everything is accessible but then also like just traveling with a baby is tricky and then traveling with a big group of 11 people is tricky. So uh, it was cool to kind of figure out how to how to get there successfully and how to make our way there. The film itself, like how did you have the idea to travel to that specific location? And then how did you arrange like the travel? Like a, it seems like a lot up front to produce and kind of coordinate. For and sure. Was a, and was a accessibility an issue during any of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um the so the whole idea for the film emerged from kind of my um engagement with disability justice and disability activism um because I wanted to make something that was like uh that talked about how like uh different forms of access are important to community without talking about it um directly. But uh and then I wanted to do it not in the United States because I feel like a lot of um, disability justice and disability activism happens in the United States. Um, but it's also like hard to go somewhere where you don't speak the language and expect people to share things with you, uh, either through a translator or whatever. And it also has these kind of 
weird colonialist vibes. So the Shetlands were a really good kind of starting point because they're in an English speaking country. They're really well off because of Northern oil. Um, so it's this community that isn't, you know, we weren't feeling like we were uh, invaders or re repeating some sort of colonialist narrative, but it is really far away and it is a unique um, culture that combines kind of Nordic culture with, with Scottish culture. And so it, it seemed like a good fit. Um, and I had just heard about the Shetlands through my own, I don't know, uh, knowledge of the world. There was, there's a, there's a um, mystery show called Shetland that put them on my radar too. So, <laughs> you know, nice. it felt like a good spot. Mystery show. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, you know, like a British whodunit kind of thing. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. It's, it's fine. It's fine. I'm not necessarily recommending it. Would you describe yourself as a filmmaker? I know, like, is this, is this your first film? Yeah, this is my first film. I've uh, directed um, a music video in the past, but it's my first kind of bigger project, and I hope to pivot to even bigger ones. But, yeah, my background's in, um, in law, actually. So I was a, a um, corporate lawyer for several years, and I was uh, in grad school for philosophy before that. So... I have all these like non filmmaking backgrounds kind of, but I think the, that um, uh, the kind of critical reflection you do in those uh, environments blends itself to filmmaking. And I'm really lucky to be surrounded by people who are actually filmmakers as their um, long-term careers and jobs. So I'm often the weakest link, uh, you know, <laughs> in these productions where people have to be like, no, 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 Alex, the way you make a movie is. Um, and that's been really great. Uh, to, to learn a bunch of that. Yeah, that's interesting too because, you know, filmmaking is such a collaborative process in exactly. a sense like your crew is the community that's kind of like surrounding you, helping you, like you can't make a film by yourself. Amen. Um, so like, that's kind of cool that your film is about that and, and in a sense like there's like a stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like how important was um, your crew in the, in the making of this and like... Oh, so so important yeah super important i feel like uh um well first of all everyone acted as a producer you know like uh in the in the producer in the reality tv show sense of like we were on the ground and then we wanted to meet and talk to as many people as we could and we had some contacts but um not too many so literally the whole crew was just like all right well let's just meet people and see what comes of it and that was um what well, would have been impossible if it was just a couple people so uh and it also meant that like you know the person who was um holding the camera was also doing interviewing or the person who was holding the sound the mic was also uh were helping with camera staff or helping with setting up the, the space when we were filming so we were all kind of and then on top of that you know we were trying to figure out okay, well, how is this, is there a ramp to get into the space where we're going to conduct this interview to help get the wheelchair in there and me in there? Or like, is this how, like friendly for children? So can we get the one-year-old in there? How's that going to be? Um, so a lot of um, communal uh, problem solving. And, you know, it's a, it was a, it's a big group of people because it's 11, but like in terms of films, it's like a tiny, you know, it's a tiny group too. So we were able to uh, get all hands on deck. Yeah, Pretty yeah. Easily. Small crews are, in my opinion, are are better because you're yeah. you're you're like become tight with everyone, and you know yeah. everyone's like strengths, and that's kind of totally. like, as a whole, you know, it just works smoother and better. I think. Totally. And we did a cool thing before we started. Even we, um, I sent uh, everyone on the crew like a little packet of um, critical disability theory readings and like just theory about access and how to talk to people and so we all like read the same theoretical background stuff and um and the our whole the movie's called speaking nearby because there's this concept in anthropology um that Treeman ha came up with called speaking nearby and it's this idea that you like don't when you know when you're doing an interview with a subject you're not like tell me about this thing that i want to learn about but you just kind of like get to know someone and then it naturally emerges that nearby somewhere that topic's going to come up so true true um 
It's yeah. kind of what I'm trying to do here. So hopefully I don't uh, right. <laughs> ask you those questions in that form in that format. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, it's, sometimes it's important to ask straight up too, you know. So however, yeah. however it comes up, yeah. Yeah. So your your film is is wanting to answer some some pretty big questions, and you know through my research and you know, I looked at your website for the film and I've watched the film a couple of times. So I'm going to read out some questions that you yourself have like written about <laughs> what your film is trying to uncover. And then we're going to talk about those. Oh, so yeah. Alex's film seeks answers to some big questions like how do our vulnerabilities through physical frailty, aging or social marginalization actually make our community stronger what are more radical ways we can practice inclusion and reform our community work? How do differences in geography and history subvert our expectations of how people make lives together? All right. So, yeah, we'll go through, we'll talk about those. And then, uh, but mainly, did you find the answers to, to these questions? Yeah, I've got all the answers now, Lance. We figured it out. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. If anyone needs to find them, speakingyourbody.com, watch the film, it'll be fun. Totally <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, accept it to all your festivals. Um, uh, yeah, no, you know, like, I think we got some insights from the people we talked to about a lot of those questions, you know, we didn't answer them in, in, in completion, but it's, it's an ongoing, so all those questions are kind of like ongoing ones of people who are thoughtful about their communities, right? It's like questions we ask all the time and we're probably all asking now even more so like, wait, but how do we do all this stuff? while we're like supposed to be six feet away, you know, or whatever yeah. it is. So it's like a, yeah, so we got, got some clues. We got some clues. We didn't uh, definitively answer. Uh, that's, I mean, the journey is always probably more important than the uh, destination. So that's right. That's right. Um, and in this case, the journey was long and arduous. So, you know. <laughs> So what what are you where are you at now in the, in the stage of the film? I know you're you're finished with it. It's not mm -hmm. out to the public yet. So that's right. That's right. Yeah, we just have the the public can see the trailer, um, but uh, it's not public yet because we sent it out to like twenty different festivals. So um, and it's a weird moment, you know. Like we sent it out to twenty different festivals that would be happening in the fall. We'll hear back sometime in the summer, but who knows? Uh, yeah, what fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like you you put all this work in. You know, you want to you want to get it shown in festivals, and then something like this. I don't like only filmmakers are aware of it, but like we're hyper aware that the festival kind of uh, circuit right now is 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 not really existent. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So if you made a film and finished it in the past uh, this this year, basically you're probably having to make a decision. Do I submit now or do I hold on to this film mm -hmm. and submit it later? And yeah, it's a weird okay. time. Weird time. Um, totally, totally. Yeah. And it's just, especially like for, for hyper uh, small budget, like, uh, you know, filmmaking in the kind that was our documentary. It's like, uh, we're doing this mostly because we want, um, like we think it'll be really important to, for, for festivals to accept it and people to see it. Um, because then hopefully we would be able to score some more funding to do something similar on a larger scale. So uh, yeah, without that yeah. festival push, it's, it's hard to know how to do that. So it sounds like you want to make more films. So like this is, wasn't just like, Oh, I want to do this one thing, give it a shot. It sounds like you enjoyed it and you're like kind of looking forward to the next one. For sure. I mean, it, it helped to work with such talented people. You know, our editor was great. Chris McKee and Lon McKee did the sound stuff. And it was just like, it's just so cool. And, and obviously Kenny uh, Martell is a cinematographer that like worked with us. And it all, it's just like really talented people make you want to you know, work more with them. You know? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 The people like it goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the crew. It's like, who's on your crew is like so vital to how your film turns out. And yeah, exactly. And then the other thing is like, you know, you go and like the crew's awesome and you have a good working situation, but also like just the stories that we heard were really great. And, um, and put, you know, and, and, you know, we were joking about those big questions we were asking at the beginning, like we want to keep on asking them. We want to keep on pushing them. So, uh why not? Why not do it again? Why not do it more? 
That's awesome. Have they, uh, the subjects in the film, have they been, have you been able to show them? Yeah, actually we just had a great zoom call with, uh, a bunch of the folks that are in the movie. Um, and, and it was, it was really special because, uh, they're all feeling nervous that they've like spoken too much for their whole community. And, uh, they're being very cautious about, um, not being too representative of all of Shetland which is, you know, uh, I think speaks to how kind of thoughtful they all are. Um, but they all had a really positive uh, reaction to the movie. They really loved it. So it was really special to see them and hear that from them. Yeah. In a sense, like I, I made a documentary before and once I have showed it to my subject and, and he approved it, I felt so much uh, pressure just relieved from really? it. Totally. Same. Yeah. And then it, and then it's all like worth it, you know, cause you make something and the people who are in it like it and it's like, great. Okay. Well, even if it like flops, like yeah. that's just more about like my own stuff, but like the people who are in it, uh, see something that's true. So. Yeah. Okay. And you're, you're showing them, you're depicting them. You, you feel a sense of responsibility and portraying exactly. them in a good way. Mm-hmm. So, which I think you did. They seem, they seem super nice. They are, yeah, <laughs> remarkably nice. Yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. it's just, maybe it's just like, you know, you live in a small community and when strangers come knocking by and like, they just want to, just want to check out what they've got to offer too. So, so that's, what's really cool about all the things you see in the film is like, it, it was super organic. Like the women on the ferry that we interviewed for part of the film, we met that day on the, we, there, we were literally on the ferry going towards Shetland. And there were these, this mother, daughter, grandmother set of three women who were hanging out at the bar and we accosted them, you know, who were like, hey, we're making this documentary. We want to talk to you about Shetland and you know, what's up? And we talked to them for two hours and uh, you know, and when you talk to folks for that long and share stuff with them, like, um, like the issues about disability and about access just kind of came up naturally, so. That was pretty cool. And then the other folks we met, at, literally we met at a store the day before and we were like, we're filming this documentary and we want to talk to you, talk to people in Shetland. And they were like, come over to our house and meet our entire family tomorrow. Huh. We like, yeah, okay. that's the, see, that's amazing to me because when I, after watching it, I assumed that, you know, you, you had seeked out um, mm-hmm. these interviews and had, had knew these people prior and kind of arranged that. So that's, that's interesting. No, that's awesome. And well, yeah, it's funny how it turned out, right? Because everyone, we we uh, ended up meeting a bunch of smart people who had a lot of stuff to say. So that was really nice. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. It seems like you got like the the filmmaking gods like really were on your side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely felt that way. Definitely felt that way. And it helped, you know, like I was saying earlier, like it just helped that uh, we were like a crew of people who were like so into uh, talking about this stuff and like being super genuine about it. And, uh, so it was just like all of our energy was directed there. And so it paid off, you know? Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. So do you have any particular projects, like the details lined up for it? Or are you kind of taking it as you go? Well, we, we are taking it as we go. We, right now the, um, the keys and I are in talks as to what our next location will be. And I think we'll, we'll want to, depending on how much funding we can, uh, cobble together. We'll probably want to for, for venture further afield somewhere where we might need a translator and um, start thinking about that. And uh, I have a lot of dreams to go to, um, you know, Mozambique and, uh, and, and and places like that. So we'll see. We'll see uh, exactly where that is. But right now it's all kind of still development talks. Like what, where can we get the money? How, where do we want to go? So that's cool. So you kind of want to continue on with the the current kind mm-hmm. of uh, theme. Yeah, for sure. Push and and the thing is, you know, and whatever the, the reality is, like it's not going to be the same as what we found in Shetland, and that's what you know people are going to answer those big questions differently. Not everything's going to be rose colored, you know. So excited to to sure. see some people tell us we're idiots as well. Which is great. Well, you you may be able to get some cheap flights right no. now. And- <laughs> Cut some yeah. costs. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Was like accessibility, like just traveling, getting to your locations, was that an issue as as someone who uses a wheelchair? Totally. I feel like so 
we uh, took a, we had a lot of footage for the, it's like a 13 minute documentary or 12 minute documentary, but we have so much footage. And a lot of that footage is like uh, the frustrations of access. Um, like the, we have this footage of like me trying to get onto a plane. I think it was in New, from New York uh, actually. And the guys that are helping like transfer me from my wheelchair to the plane seat, like drop me at some point. And so I'm like, falling over and you have this group of people around me that's like, you know, 10, 10 folks standing around all like everyone gasps at the same time. <laughs> and we have this, it's like a pretty amazing uh, scene, but we did it because the film wasn't going to be about accessibility. Like we were like, all right, well, let's just not have that be as dramatic, but, but stuff like that happens all the time, you know, and I like to keep a good attitude about it, but um it could be, you know, for folks that are dealing with this stuff regularly without like a group of supportive friends and, um, and coworkers, it's like, it's super frustrating. Um, but yeah, and then like the train from London to Ab Aberdeen, like just was not accessible. So I had to be carried onto the train. It, like stuff like that was always tricky. But, um, but what's nice is when you have this big group of folks that are willing to to help you out. Like, I think actually that we do have in the film of like, two of my girlfriends literally carrying me onto a train. So um, that stuff was, was, uh, was great. Actually, it makes, it makes me feel very like uh, supported and cared for, but it's, a, it's better. I think when it's institutionally already. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I tend to gravitate towards places that are accessible. Like yeah. I noticed that myself, if I'm at a restaurant or at a movie theater and I'm like, this place, it's not accessible at all. And I, mm -hmm. I take notes of that. Um, so I was just curious totally. as to how like flying would be. That just seems like it, yeah. it would, it would be challenging. Yeah. It's a, it's a challenging thing. It, like I, I had an experience recently flying back from Rome um, where the, you know, the airport in Rome is like um, you, you could take a bus to the plane and then you go up the stairs to get on the plane. Um, which obviously like someone that's uh, uh, paralyzed you can't do. So they have, um, they put my wheelchair onto like the baggage uh, lift and then like put me into the plane from like the other side of the plane through the baggage lift. Uh, and it was wild. It was really kind of like terrifying, but at the same time, the guys knew exactly what they were doing. Cause it, I wasn't the first one using a plane uh, with a wheelchair. So it kind of was just like a cool experience of like, cool. It's just me and the luggage getting this through the cargo holes. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, it's weird. weird. Yeah, well, I'm I, I I'm glad that you were able to capture some of that footage and it's in the doc. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. where can people um like who are interested in maybe seeing the trailer, is there you want to shout out like a link or anything? Yeah, www.speakingyourby.com. So Speaking Your Bias, the name of the documentary, and that's our website, Speaking Your Bias. So. Cool. And yeah, and I'll, and I'll provide that link too in the uh, details cool. of the episode. Oh, yeah. So each episode of the podcast, you know, I, I let the guest kind of give a shout out to like a charity or nonprofit. I was wondering, would you like to feature uh, anyone in particular, any organization? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, since we've been kind of like talking about disability stuff, I really love this organization called Sins Invalid. Uh, they're out in Berkeley and they're a, um, a performance group that centers disability activists and um, non-binary folks and queer folks and um, people of color. And it's just like a really positive space for multi multiply marginalized community members to perform and, and be, um, artistically uh, engaged and so uh, and they make really cool kind of edgy stuff that I love so Sims Invalid are, are the guys I'm calling out and I feel like uh, if anyone's got some extra cash uh, I know that they could always use it cool yeah I'll, I'll have to check that out I, I've, I've not heard of that organization mm -hmm. um, and I'll provide a link to them as well in the description notes uh, cool. cool yeah so I think that about does it for me, unless you have anything else you want to throw in there. No, yeah, thanks, Lance. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Yeah, episode one. I feel <laughs> I feel uh, pretty good to have, have one in the can, you know? That's right. That's right. And, you know, there's lots of cool folks doing, doing awesome stuff in the world. So 
I look forward to listening to, to who you who you interview. Cool. Well, thanks, Alex, and uh, take care. Thanks. Stay safe during quarantine. Yeah, you too. And that's it, everyone. That was my conversation with filmmaker Alex Blaschek. She was the first guest on the show. I hope you enjoyed it. To learn more about the podcast, visit seethroughpod.com. There you can learn more information about the podcast, Alex, and her film Speaking Nearby. Thanks for listening. Episode 3 will be your way soon.